necessary for the New Mexico Department of Public Safety, the primary tenant of this uh, building that is being dedicated today. And before I proceed any further, I just want to introduce the people with whom I have been privileged to sit up front. Um, from my left to my right, um, uh, uh, in this order, Governor Susana Martinez, the governor of the state of New Mexico. We're very pleased to have the governor of the state of Chihuahua, Cesar Duarte. We're also privileged to have the mayor of Juarez, Enrique Serrano. And the mayor of the capital city of Chihuahua, Javier Garfield. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a big day for the Department of Public Safety, for Chief Cassettis uh, and the New Mexico State Police Division, and perhaps most importantly for the men and women of the Motor Transportation Bureau, many of whom are here today. And although I am delighted to have as many distinguished visitors with us today as we do, I want to begin by thanking the patrol officers, the transportation inspectors, and the civilian personnel of motor transportation who day in and day out under, under physically challenging and sometimes environmentally challenging conditions uh, work without fame or, or fanfare um, to uh, enforce the Motor Carrier Act, the Motor Transportation Act, and this host of federal and state regulations that exist, all so that commercial motor vehicles are safe, their drivers are proficient, and ultimately the roadways and highways of New Mexico are as safe as they can be. So men and women of motor transportation, on behalf of our governor, the citizens of New Mexico, and everybody else who drives through it, thanks for what you do for us every day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you either have or soon today will be invited to tour this uh, magnificent building, this showpiece in the desert. I want to thank the architect, Wilson and Company, for designing this place. I want to thank the two contractors, Smith and Aguirre, who I'm told did the flat work, and um, Classic Industries, who I'm told did the vertical work, because together this partnership uh, created this magnificent structure. And if you do tour it, or if you have toured it, I think you will conclude that it was built to a scale sufficient to handle this exploding commercial traffic at this port of entry in this part of the United States. I think you will conclude that it has state-of-the-art technology and that its functionality is ahead of the industry standard. And I think you will also conclude that this place bears no comparison to the port of entry that it is replacing and we are not taking you there. After all, who wants to tour a broken down double wide trailer into which we crammed 20 to 25 employees and forced them to work there day after day? If you do that to prison inmates, you get sued, but apparently you can do it, you can do it to law enforcement officials. So in a very real way, when we cut this ribbon, the men and women of motor transportation assigned to Santa Teresa will have gone from the outhouse to the penthouse and ladies and gentlemen of Motor Trans, you guys deserve a building like this, and I'm just sorry that it took 20 years to get it to you. There are 11 ports of entry that are operated by the state in New Mexico, and this one is now the crown jewel. But each port of entry is a partnership among state government agencies. There's the landlord, the General Services Department, represented today by Secretary Ed Burkle. There is the, the, highway, um, the highway Maintenance and Construction Czar, the State Department of Transportation. There's the enforcement arm, the Motor Transportation Division of DPS. And then you have a tax function that tax and, and uh, taxation and revenue performs for the weight distance tax that commercial motor vehicles have to pay. Secretary Padilla isn't uh, here today from Tax and Rev. I think she's auditing my tax return. But her, she, she performs a very important function at the ports of entry as well. And a, a special thanks to Bill Matisse uh, from the New Mexico Border Authority. There's not very much that happens down here without his fingerprint prints on it, and this port of entry is no exception. All right, that's the grand opening part, and I just want to say something about why we're dedicating this building to the name of a fallen officer. Um, July 11th of 1989, 26 years ago next month, Officer Daniel Rivera, 30 years old, died as he, uh, in a vehicle collision as he was pursuing a commercial motor vehicle that fled the port of entry. As I said, he was 30 years old. 
He was a veteran of the United States Navy and the United States Naval Reserve, and he had graduated from the New Mexico Law Enforcement Academy only two years earlier. He had a bright future ahead of him, and that was taken from him that day. But his legacy did not die with him on that hot roadway in July of 1989. He left behind an unborn son, and in a fitting tribute to, his, to the father that he never knew, Officer Daniel Hawkins of the New Mexico Motor Transportation Department is with us today, and he is assigned to the Santa Teresa Station, and he will work in a building that is dedicated to his father. And Officer Hawkins is sitting right here. I want you to stand up, Daniel. Thank you. He's here with his wife, Sandra, and his beautiful daughter, Esmeralda. Uh, Daniel, I never got to meet your dad, but I know that he is looking down on this ceremony. I'm sure he's sheepish about a building being named for him and a bunch of people showing up, but he's got a smile on his face and a twinkle in his eye, and he can't be more proud of the man and the officer that you've become. So uh, that, that is a fitting tribute to the dad that you never knew. Um, I want to uh, introduce the next guest speaker, uh, whom I met in his home uh, state and his home city last month. Uh, Chihuahua has had many governors, but there has never been a governor whose, whose vision and leadership for economic development, law enforcement, corrections, homeland security, health, water, the list goes on. Um, whose vision and leadership have ever been more refined or more effective than the next person I am bringing to the lectern. And it is truly an honor and an example of the partnership between New Mexico and Chihuahua that exists that is the best that those states have had in 50 years for me to invite Governor Cesar Duarte to this lecture. And she's getting one, uh, a short one anyway. Um, in, in many ways, this port of entry is, is reflective of the renaissance that Santa Teresa itself has undergone under the administration and the leadership of uh, Governor Martinez. The economic and uh, infrastructural juggernaut that Santa Teresa has become is one of this governor's signature achievements, and in my view, it well should be. And it is sufficient, really, for me to say that, that the Department of Public Safety, that law enforcement across New Mexico, and that the community of Santa Teresa has never had a better advocate in the office of the Chief Executive of New Mexico than it has had for the last five years in Governor Martinez. So it's my honor and privilege to introduce my boss and my friend, the Governor of New Mexico, Susana Martinez.